Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back. This is Audrey from Audrey Approved and I'm going to do anticipated releases today. So I like to do these videos maybe once or twice a year and they truly are, like I, I do truly read them. <laughs> I do read like 80 or 90% of the books that I talk about in these types of videos because they are the books that I have like made holds for already at my local library or I've put like a notification on Libby to tell me when my library adds them so that I can then, you know, get in line. So it's a bit of an eclectic mix. We have nonfiction history, which is one of my favorite uh, genres. And then there's some romance. There's a little bit of sci-fi or speculative fiction. Um, I feel like I'm also gravitating towards like humorous books this year. Uh, something about them I'm, I'm just uh, really enjoying lately. And so yeah, I hope you enjoy and I'll jump right in. So it is basically the end of January, but I do want to mention one book that has already come out that I am, you know, really interested in, and that is Our Moon, A Human History by Rebecca Boyle. And I saw this in an email that came out last Tuesday, because that's the day that bookshops always send out about the new books that got released that day. That's where the author was described as a new voice in narrative nonfiction. And I feel like if there's any kind of selling line, it's probably that for me. So that definitely made me at least click on it to read about, you know, the book. And so I'm interested in this because of that, but also because of the subtitle. It's a human history. And so this traces our relationship with our closest celestial neighbor, not only in terms of, you know, the space race and how we ended up getting to the moon, but also our relationship with the moon over time, culturally, and how it has been important to many different types of people, you know, across thousands and thousands of years. So I think this will be really good. I am very eagerly anticipating my audiobook version of it. The first Tuesday of February has three books that I'm interested in, and I think I'll put maybe the dates somewhere on the screen or in the down bar. The first book on February 6th is The Gardener of Lashkargah, The Afghans Who Risked Everything to Fight the Taliban by Larissa Brown. And this is all about American collaborators, such as uh, interpreters, that helped Americans while they were in Afghanistan, and then what happened to them when American forces pulled out abruptly in 2021 when the Taliban came back into power. And so I anticipate this to be the story about an individual family and the people within that family. But like much of the historical nonfiction that I enjoy, it's really telling the story of many through the story of few. Bride by Ali Hazelwood is a book that I see on many people's videos like this. And so I am a huge fan of Ali Hazelwood romances because I feel like as a woman in STEM, I love, I absolutely love seeing a female engineer be the main character of like a popular romance book. I just think it's so much fun. I will continue to read any STEM romance that she comes out with. But this one veers in a different direction, I believe. It has to do with a vampire and a werewolf. And I'm a little bit confused why it wasn't released in the fall season, but maybe they're trying to drop it around Valentine's Day. Anyway, I've enjoyed Ali Hazelwood stuff enough that I will check this one out even though there are no engineers in it. If there was one subject that I truly loved reading about in 2023, it was art and art history. And I know that I am really slow with coming out with videos sometimes, but I have quite a few videos planned amongst this kind of, you know, art and art history kind of subgenre. And so one of the books that I want to read towards, you know, memoirs from the art world is it's a, long, it's a long title. Get the picture, a mind-bending journey among the inspired artists and obsessive art fiends who taught me how to see by Bianca Bosker. This is the memoir of the author jumping into the world of art, but also trying to figure out, you know, why is art so important to us? And if there's one thing that I, I think I, I realized last year, it's that I really like when nonfiction authors kind of jump into their subject. And so they become characters characters within their own nonfiction arc and nonfiction storyline. And so I'm hoping this is something that happens in this book. I don't actually like the cover very much, but uh, I am intrigued to pick this one up. And then later in February, there is another book about art, but this time it is fiction that brings art to life. It is The Vanitas and Other Tales of Art and Obsession by Jake Kendall. And I believe this is a short story collection. I'm not quite sure what like the main theme about it is, but what caught my eye in the book blurb is that it says, quote, weaving art styles such as cubism, surrealism, and the Baroque into his prose 
Jake Kendall has crafted a vivid and inventive collection, unquote. So yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that means, but I want to know more. And so I'm going to get this in probably an, an ebook in case there's like visual cues within the actual text. The first speculative fiction on this list comes out at the end of February. It is The Other Valley by Scott Alexander Howard. And I do feel like there's been a bit of a like surgence in... I don't know if I would call it like literary sci-fi that's come out in the last few years. I feel like, you know, the popularity of Sea of Tranquility, the popularity of um, I think How High We Go in the Dark, I would also categorize in that. And there's a few others that I think, you know, solidly sit within this category. And this one to me also gives that sort of vibe. And so this is about a town that exists in this valley. And there's a town, um, you know, in one direction, say like north of it and a town south of it. And one of those towns lives 20 years in the past and the other town lives 20 years in the future. The borders are not perfect. And so I believe there are individuals that cross amongst, you know, these different towns. And so what happens when, when that occurs? I don't know anything else about it. I don't want to know anything else about it going into it, but this one really intrigues me and I totally love the cover on this one. Liquid History, The Story of Us in Seven Rivers by Vanessa Taylor. I don't think this one has a cover yet, but it is the history of seven rivers. I don't know if I can name them. The Nile, the Mississippi, the Thames, the Yangtze, and the other ones in which I will learn when I read this book. Um, but this is, uh, I think, going to be like a full sweet history. So what were the economics, politics, the culture, the anthropology of these different rivers and how they have been important to civilizations over time. The only other book in March that I'm interested in is The Manicure's Daughter by Susan Liu, which has a stunning cover. And this is a memoir of the daughter of a Vietnamese um, immigrant, so she's a Vietnamese American, and her mother ends up dying of botched plastic surgery. This is part of the, the book blurb. And so I'm anticipating this to be a reflection on her relationship with her mother, but also a reflection on what the American dream can be in reality, which is sometimes not as pretty as it is, you know, painted out to be. So this is one of the last books that I want to read for kind of a collection of Vietnamese American immigrant stories that I have read in the past sort of sort of year. It's a subject that uh, I am very interested in. So if you have more on that kind of, you know, sub 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 genre, uh, please let me know. The beginning of April brings us a history of the world in 12 shipwrecks by David Gibbons. And this cover actually reminds me of another book that I read earlier this year, which was The Underworld by Susan Casey. And I feel like there's also another one like into the planet by Jill something. There's like, they all give the same vibes and apparently it works because I like the covers on all of them. Um, but like the title suggests, this is a collection of histories about shipwrecks that have been really important. I've probably read, I don't know, 15 books about shipwrecks in the last few years. So it's a subject that I do enjoy reading about. Uh, and we'll see how this one stacks up amongst the others. I'm a little bit nervous because the author has only written I would say mediocrely received historical fiction before. So we'll see what his historical nonfiction looks like, but I am intrigued and lots of people seem to have this on their TBRs as well. Everest Incorporated, The Renegades and Rogues Who Built an Industry at the Top of the World by Will Cockrell. So I read Into Thin Air by John Krakauer a while back. Really love that book, but one of the things that it talks about is the industry of mountain climbing. So when you, you know, pay people to guide you to climb these really big mountains, Everest might be an extreme case, but you know, many other mountains have, you know, guided climbing. So this book dives into what that industry has done to mountaineering as an adventure sport. And so it quotes, you know, many people within that industry. So I think Jimmy Chin, for example, is uh, blurbed as being, not blurbed, he is told in the blurb it is said in the blurb that he is part of the book. Sorry, that's where I'm trying to go with that. Um, but yeah, this is the only book so far that I'm, that I'm mentioning where my dad and I have already committed to adding it to our father-daughter book club. I don't know much about this next one. It is The Last Delivery by Evan Dom. And all I know is that it's a graphic novel 
and it has an adorable cover and that the description reminded me quite a bit of Piranesi. It describes this boy, like a delivery boy, I believe, that is trying to navigate this kind of labyrinthian house. I read that and I was like, you know what, why not? I want to read this one. And then rounding out April, we have, <clears throat> I don't actually know what the title is, Totoba right now is the acronym by Jay Bree, which is the second book in the Mortal Fates series. And I read the first book, of which I'll put the cover up right now because I can't remember the title right now, um, last year. And this is a true enemies to lovers story. Like I have never seen two main romantic leads hate each other like these two characters hate each other. And so I, I am hoping that because the first book was like 650 pages of buildup, that I will get some reward for my patience in book two. So I will likely read this maybe even the day that it comes out because I, I am really excited for this one. I think this is uh, one of the, the romances or at least one of the series that I am eagerly anticipating, you know, the next in the installment. And then May has the most books that I want to read. It's also where I'm kind of cutting this video, so I'm not doing anything in June yet. So I'll release something maybe in, in June to talk about those. But the first book that comes out at the beginning of May is The Ministry of Time by Callian Bradley. I don't know if I transcribed that incorrectly, but I'll put the title up. Um, and they describe this as a time travel romance, a spy thriller, and a workplace comedy. So I'm really hoping, especially the workplace comedy part, gets pulled, you know, to the forefront here. This is getting marketed quite strongly, I would say. So I, I know quite a few people are interested in this book. I don't, again, I don't know much about it, but I think it's a stunning cover. It's the author's debut. And again, that, that one sentence in, in the description has really kind of gotten its hooks in me. Out of all the books that I'm talking about today, this one might be maybe top three of the anticipated releases, and it is The Devil's Best Trick, How the Face of Evil Disappeared by Randall Sullivan. And it's described as a part true crime, part historical context, part like cultural analysis of our relationship with the figure that is the devil. And yeah, I just, I just think that, you know, this idea of how we've interacted with this kind of evil figure in literature, in, in real life over time, seems really intriguing. I've said this before, but I really enjoy, you know, nonfiction histories of religion. So this to me is an anticipated five-star release. I will read it the day that it comes out. Paradise of the Damned, the true story of an obsessive quest for El Dorado, the lost or the legendary city of gold by Keith Thompson, follows the story of really a, a fanatic that was really intrigued with the idea and the concept of El Dorado. I forget his actual name right now. And so this book, which kind of gives me, what is it, Lost City of Monkey King vibes, at least the cover does, uh, is going to trace the history of that man and his doomed quest for that city of gold. But I bet it will also talk, you know, in different tangents about all the other people that have gone in search for El Dorado and how Dorado has been important, at least culturally or at least in, in Disney movies. Towards the end of May, we have I Hope This Finds You Well by Natalie Sue, which at first I thought was a romance book. I think it is maybe the colors of the cover that made me think that. This is actually a piece of contemporary fiction. It's a workplace drama, and it covers a, a main character who accidentally, she works in HR, and she accidentally gets access to all of her colleagues' private DMs and emails. I just think that's a, a really fun kind of setup for, for a story. I'm hoping it'll be really funny, um, but I do also expect this to talk a little bit about workplace culture and workplace expectations and also, you know, the, the faces that we put on when we go to work in the morning and we don't take off until we come home at night. Two more books round out May on May 28th. The first is Summer Fridays by Suzanne Rindell. And I just have really good feelings about this one. And it covers two leads who uh, have, they're in separate relationships and they suspect that their respected partners are having an affair. And so they use their summer Fridays, which is a real thing. My cousin lives in, in New York and she told me that she does actually get Fridays off in the summer, which blew my mind as a West Coaster. Um, but they spend their summer Fridays trying to investigate if their, you know, suspicions are true, and I think maybe in the process, romance ensues. 
And then lastly, we have A Walk at the Park, The True Story of a Spectacular Misadventure in the Grand Canyon by Kevin Federico. So in 2022, in December 2022, I read The Emerald Mile by Kevin Federico, and it was the best nonfiction book that I read that year by far. And so I have been eagerly anticipating anything that he might come out with next, because that book was released, I think, quite a while ago. And so in this book, he returns to the Grand Canyon, he and he walks, I think, 750 miles of the Grand Canyon. And so it's a bit of a travelogue. It's not a piece of, I guess, historical nature writing. It's more a uh, travelogue, which is a subgenre that I have grown to really enjoy in the last year or two. So. This one, I think he brings a photographer along with him, and so I will be reading it in... Uh, actually, I think I'll read it in print. I think this is going to be the one book that I do actually purchase from, from the list that I'm talking about today. But very eagerly anticipating uh, this new, new release by Kevin Federko. And those are my anticipated releases up through the end of May. I hope that I've added a few to your radar, or at least now you know some of the books that I might be talking about and reviewing in, in upcoming videos, or if you follow me on something like Goodreads, maybe a lot sooner than a video. <laughs> but I hope again that uh, you were entertained and I'll see you next time. Please take care.